welcome. What a beautiful spring evening. Mid-May we're in. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? I think we can all agree on that. But here I am in gorgeous Oxfordshire on a beautiful, intimate little lake. I've got carp bubbling behind me. I've got them sloshing out all over the place. It's gonna be the perfect bit of fishing. We've got a lovely barbecue this evening. We're gonna fish in a pretty ad hoc, opportunist style while we're here. Get around the pond, bait a few little spots. Do the night here, because we're gonna have a lovely barbecue and some food, and of course, wine. It's, oh, there you go, there's one just sloshed out there. It's looking good for a bite or two, I can tell you that. The water's clear, the fish look really up for it. I think we're gonna have the loveliest of times. It's always Magnifi, isn't it? It's <laughs> Cote de Rhone. It's my favourite tipple in the entire world. And I can tell you now, if I'm sat by a beautiful lake like this, drinking Cote de Rhone, all is right with the world. There's one. It's great here, isn't it? Well, this rod, I fished this lake before, but not, not for a couple of years. Um, but this spot was always one of my bankers. It's right outside the gate, no one fishes here. And like the spot, although you can't see it, is literally a little short strip of clear ground before the weed starts. It's here. Look, I'll show you exactly where I'm gonna be putting this rod. Right there. It's probably four or five foot from the bank. And it's a lovely little clear bit. There's a little clump of weed here, but you've literally got a strip of about that wide runs here, right up into this corner. And nobody ever fishes it, ever. That's the spot. And I know that the second it gets dark, a lot of the fishing here, because the water's gone so clear and it never used to be, um, the fish are hanging up over the back, under them trees and in these weed beds. As it gets dark, they'll start sloshing. I've had some nights in here where this bay has been full of what well, sounds like giant sloshing carp. Do you know what I mean? The most exciting nights ever have been right here. Like I used to set up just there, the other side of the path, and then have one rod in the edge and I caught so many of the good ones doing it. So yeah, tonight we're gonna try it again. They've been in this bay today. I've had a little walk round, put a few bits of pellet here and there and a look, because it's clear you can do. But this one is, it's the one I keep looking at and keep coming back to. I've not seen any carp in this corner. Uh, they've all been out in the weed beyond light, but I know that when it gets dark, this is probably my banker rod. There's literally no point in tightening the clutch up because it'll have the rod in. So I want to try and slow it down enough before I get here, but not for it to pull the rod in. So, And there you go. As easy as that. That's how spring carp fishing should be. The fish are mega active, it's been warm. They're all over the lake, you know, they're in the edge and they're over there. They've been jumping over there, over here, over there. <laughs> they are getting about. But this spot here, as close as it is and as obvious as it looks, you know, once it's dark, it's a very different thing. They'll creep out of this weed and this one, I reckon will go. Well, morning from the glorious Oxfordshire countryside and what a glorious morning it is. Lovely warm night, fish sloshing out in the lake all night. It was absolutely superb. We had a brilliant barbecue, a few bottles of wine. We was laughing and joking till late. Anyway, we were, everyone's gone. We crept off to bed and uh, I was out like a light. I'd had a couple of glasses of wine too many, I think. Anyway, four o'clock this morning, sure enough, clatter off it's gone after a night of carp sloshing everywhere in front of me. You know, to start with, you're like looking at you, trying to see where they are, and after a while, you just give up because you know they're there. And uh, yeah, this morning it's been brilliant. I can't take, I've got rods all the way down this bank and I can't take my eyes off them. You know, you look up this big sheeting up over that one, sheeting up over this one. Just brilliant spring carp fishing, like, like, like it should be, super enjoyable. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to finish the coffee, I'm going to have a cigarette and then we're going to have a look at this lovely cup. Ah, oh, there you go. A lovely Oxfordshire cup. At very, very first light. I think quarter past four or something. I was away with the fairies and off it went. He's bristling. They're melting. He's an angry male carp, but very welcome nonetheless. A lovely Oxfordshire, Oxfordshire carp. He's got a break in his dorsal, an old break. A couple of scratches on him, but lovely. I'll show you the other side. It's an old break. There you go. Yep, we're going to put this one back. We're going to have a bacon sandwich to fortify the team. And then we're going to do what we are actually setting out to do, which is do a bit of stalking today. It's going to be a lovely day by the look of it. We're going to get round, bait a few spots in the edge and just keep trotting around. And hopefully there'll be a couple more of these to show you at some point. Lovely. Water's really clear here. Over the winter last year, they had lots of predators, goose sanders and cormorants, and wiped out the stock of roach and rudd, which were formidable, believe me. The colour was always, you could never see the bottom and stuff. Well, this year, like after the, all the roach and that have been eaten, the colour's come back, you know, the clarity's come back, it's beautiful. But what that does mean for us is like the spots in the edge are really yellow and really blatant and quite scary to the fish. And we saw this morning, one of my rods, they were sheeting all round it in the weed, literally feet from my rig, but they didn't come onto that gravel to eat it. So they're obviously a bit frit. So what we're gonna do is, when they're frit, I won't be putting out lots of sweet corn. I'm gonna put a couple of grains, but it's literally gonna be a small handful of bloodworm pellets and a couple of soaked krill boys. For this trip, I've brought us down to the beautiful and intimate Croft Pool in Oxfordshire, one of my favourite little lakes. I don't come here a lot. I treat it a bit as a bit of special, if you know what I mean. I like to have the odd trip in the spring and the odd trip in the winter. The fish are really, really lovely in here. There's a lovely mixed stock. Loads of big ones these days. I'm told over 20, 30 pounders, which is amazing for a little pool like this. The clarity's great. It's got lots of features, lots of snags, lots of little bars and gullies and islands just everything that a carp angler would love, and it keeps you busy. You get up in the morning, if you've been lucky enough to catch one, you have a picture, you put him back, then you have something to eat, go for a trot round. It's a lovely place to fish, and it's a lake of two halves, which makes it even more interesting because it means wherever you are, the carp very quickly aren't, so it keeps you on your toes, you know, and I just love that about it. Straight away. There you go. Quick recast. We lost the sun, which is no fun. It's a nice one as well. And we lost the sun, and uh, like all you, all you, all your hopes for these edge spots, like just go. They just don't want to be right in the edge. It's a really nice mirror, this one. You have to keep them on a bit of a short line if possible. Got so much to lose them in here, you just don't want to mess it up. And try and keep them on a, on a shortish line. It's not that easy in tight, confined swim. There's a lot of like, a lot of these pad roots are very, very heavy duty. Oh, I took a bit of a swipe at him then. He's a thrasher, isn't he, this one? He keeps laying on the line, getting it caught behind his peck. Oh, you'll do, son, you will do. Lovely times. And there you go, like a recast. The fish had been moving here and out there. We lost the sun, which means all these little bits that they were clouding up yesterday 
are done. Like, you know, you, you, you try and carry on with it, but you know it's not the one. And I just sat there with Tom and said, the oh, sun's gone, mate, that's it, it's done. Like, we've got to put them out in the pond. I've literally put one out by the pad, it's got a lovely drop, slacked the line off, went to get a few baits to ping out. As I was pinging out the baits, it, it tightened up and was away, like, and I've got a really lovely one. It looks a nice one as well. It's a beautiful looking carp for sure. Nailed, as they say in the trade. Got him really odd angle there. There you go, the perfect bit of what really is opportunist angling. We lost the light. It was all pivotal on the light. You know, the water's gone clear after the roach have all been eaten. That means the clarity's back, which means the carp are super active early. And you can see them swimming about. They're showing and bubbling and having a lovely time. But it's a very, very snaggy, weedy, paddy little pond. And getting a drop is critical to getting a bite. We lost the sun, so we went out in the pond, got a lovely drop. And literally two minutes later, <laughs> this one was on the end. You've got to be thankful for that because it's a lovely carp. Oh yeah. He's very plump, full of eggs. And a much better side, that side, isn't it? Lovely. Cracker that, I'm really happy with that one. I thought I'd caught him, but I'm not sure I have, you know? Lovely carp either way. <laughs> Wicked, eh? God, he gave me a right old run around and all. He's got some whip to him. He's quite a heavy cod. Brilliant. I'm well happy with that. Let's see if we can get one or two more before we go home. That had just been perfect. I'll tell you what, though. I think we need that sun. But either way, wicked. As usual for me, my, I guess you call standard approach. Um, really simple for me, as always, it, it never gets any more complicated, it needn't be. It's just strength and reliability. I've got, literally, I've got a krill boilie, chopped down with a little topper pop up on it. Um, I want the bait on the bottom. There's a lot of stuff out there, but when you get a drop, you want it on the bottom, because literally inches from it will be pads and cabbages and all sorts. I go for my, as always, a helicopter set up for most of this sort of fishing because I don't know whether I'm gonna be chucking under a bush, lowering one in the edge, flicking it under an overhang and stopping it or flinging it around the corner. And as I've said many times, a helicopter rig offers you the very best of everything. You sling it out, you get a better fall of the hook link with a tighter drop and stuff. You know, you haven't got time to try and drag the hook link out and get it to lay back. Everything about an helicopter rig presents it pretty much as good as it can be over clean bottom when you're casting. When I'm talking about casting here. So yeah, super, super strength, nothing else. That's a size seven curve point. Now a lot of people think that's too small of an hook. And uh, I've had many giant carp battles with these hooks and I really love them. That's where I get my, my touch of, um, you know, refinement, if you like, out the rig, because other than that, it is really bog standard. Um, a little bit of peeled back, cam soft, 25 pound, a little krill with a little squid topper, cut down just to make it all smaller, suits the size of the hook better. A foot of lead core, I don't use lots of lead core, I don't like it. Invariably, if I'm fishing on clean ground, it stands out a mile, but you know, a 12 inch length, or just enough that when you're casting, even with the bead up, that the bait won't tangle around the top because it will do, <laughs> mark my words. So that's ample. And even if I was fishing in softer, I can pull that up another few inches yet. So it's all compact, very nice, very good. Um, I've got some 20 pound test fluorocarbon line. Like everything is just bulletproof. You know, you can imagine, can't you? They go tearing through these pads. There's lots of the roots deep down are like the size of your wrist. Like you just, you just have to beef up everything. This isn't about refinement as much as it's about strength. But as I've said, there is some refinement in that rig. It's super strong, yet it's super supple, doesn't tangle, everything about it's brilliant. And hopefully we'll get another pull on it. Right, we've had our fish here. And, and they've been conspicuous by their absence. Do you know what I mean? They, yesterday they were rolling here all afternoon, etc., etc. They've just gone now. 
and it's quite clear they've gone. So we're going to go looking for them. We've been baiting them in the, in the corner over there on the wind. It hasn't had the sun today. It's not been ideal, but there has been the odd fish coming in and out. Um, we had a half hour earlier, no good, but we've seen fish since then, so we're going to nip round, give it an hour in the little cut over in the corner, and uh, if nothing develops from that, then the next walk, we'll walk up to the next bit that I baited, and then the next bit. We've already been up to the far end. It's really coloured up there. You can hear the coots behind me. That's another fish just jumped up there. And like I said, on a little clear, intimate lake like this, regardless of the pads and the snags and stuff, when you upset them, they go. Like wherever you are, ultimately they won't be. So we're gonna get round, try and find them somewhere else. to the far end of the lake like I explained earlier it's like a letter C like it's like a polo mint but with a bridge going across so like a letter C and of course one end to the other these fish constantly a bit of pressure up one end you can guarantee they'll all be down here and like we've come up to this end sure enough this morning it was chocolate up this end and I could hear fish and I could hear the coots going this morning constantly where, they, where fish were jumping and stuff We've just come up now and there's quite a few about. It's still lovely and coloured up here compared to the other side of the lake that has literally got tapper today, like unbelievably so. Um, and of course we've not been fishing up here. So you know the bulk of them are now here having a lovely time. Well, we've been baiting that tree line since this morning. Keep walking around, amples of pellet and stuff. And I've been watching the fish. They're cutting straight across towards that tree line. I'm pretty confident that we'll get a bite or two here but we're going to go back round to the other side because there is fish there in those pads. They're still about, but just sort of in the pads. We'll give it a couple of hours there while we pack our stuff down and then we'll get round here for this evening, get the rods out, probably do the night here. And then tomorrow morning it all starts again on the next laps looking for bites, you know? But I'm pretty confident we'll get bites here. I like this swim. They call it Nick's. <laughs> I say I've fished a fair bit in here in the winter a few years ago. I'm looking forward to it. It's a lovely spot to wake up to. Honestly, the joy of this fishing is in its simplicity. You know, you've seen the rigs, you've seen the approach, my helicopter, one sort of rig suits all approach, and it does suit all the approaches here. I can, I can flick at some bubbling, I can slide one under an overhanging tree, lower one in the edge. It is pretty much as good as it gets for everything. And I don't like being tied to a swim. A lot of the times, it's very simple to, to trap yourself in your own swim by the way you fish, you wrapping it up and then committing bait to an area and all of a sudden like you've seen your session out and you, you've sort of felt unable to move. You know, you've ruined it for yourself without even realising until it's too late. And fishing very simply just means that you can move simply, you can move quickly. Real, real simple, real enjoyable, keeps you on your toes, keeps you active, not sat under a bivvy smoking and just watching your bloody phone, like waiting for one to rattle off, like there's no joy in that, there really isn't. Like get on your toes, have a little look about, like you get an opportunity, you get a bonus fish, that's the bits you remember, they're the bits that you enjoy. Oh, I nipped round so and so and lowered one in, two or three came through, I got one straight away, and then they're gone and then you go off and look for the next chance. And that is the beauty of this sort of fishing. Perfect. Oh. oh, it came off. We'd left this area alone, like I said, Lake of Two Arfs, etc. cetera. Um, and while we were fishing up that end, we kept walking around. I was putting a few pellets off this bush here, a spot I know really well. We decided to come around and give it a go. We'd seen fish bow waving around and that under the surface. And I had a bite almost straight away, because by complete surprise, anyway, I lost it. Really, you don't lose many in this swim. Although it looks sketchy, it is, actually isn't. Um, so I've landed two today and lost one. 
and that's not in the remit for me. I don't like losing them. I'm feeling pretty narcs about it. But anyway, nothing ventured, nothing gained. We've given it another half hour. I did have a couple of bleeps and a bit of a liner, but since then, nothing. It's gone eerily calm here. We haven't seen the carp here, but I keep seeing them jumping through the channel at the other end. All the scum and all that's up in that corner where we were fishing earlier, and it just looks so good. And we keep seeing the odd one flopping out. And I think probably there's a lot of mosquitoes here as well, which are not very pleasant. So I think, I think what we're going to do, it'd be easy to sit here and probably get a bite in the morning. But, you know, that's not me really, is it? I'd rather chase a couple of bites. So I think we're going to go up the other end where there's more activity. There's a bit of bubbling. The fish are still showing. And uh, we'll get the rods out for the night. And just like that, we're back at the far end of the lake where we started off. And like all this sort of fishing, you know, this time of year, I haven't been here for a while. I've got to remember the last time I fished, it was in the winter. There was nothing out there. You could literally cast a rod anywhere and get a bite. But of course, you've got a lot, because the clarity's come back with all the roach and the rud going, and the lake's been siltexed, it's in great condition. So you've got all this mad weed growing up everywhere, and you need to know where your drops are. We've seen them bubbling in six or seven spots today repeatedly. And I can I get a drop there, I can't get a drop there, or there's a big clump of some mad weed growing. But I know, I caught one out here very quickly. I know I've got a clear channel in the weed there with a really hard drop right up against the pads. And that's two thirds of it, you know, is like uh, if you can get where they are and get drops, you're fishing. And um, for a lot of time today, I was about, I wasn't really fishing, you know, you're seeing them bubbling there and like, as an angler, your interest is peaked, isn't it? So you like flick a lead out there, try and get a drop, try and get a drop. And um, I've done a bit of that today. Well, that's not a bad thing, because what it's meant is now I've come back into the swim, I know exactly where I can cast and get decent drops and be fishing. So that's what I intend to do. Again, exactly the same as everywhere else, real simple. Get out there, get a drop, cut the pouch rules around it. Should do a bite. Well, morning, and very bleary-eyed this morning. I was kept awake all night by a giant cod sloshing out. It was the most incredible night, and the complete and utter flip side to the night before. The first night we were here in the odd cup, you know, we'd been seeing a few in the afternoon, but last night, the entire county was alive. Oxfordshire was going off. Like, it's amazing how different it can be, isn't it? Like, from one night to the next. Last night, I reckon every carp in this lake was here in front of us, jumping and jumping and jumping. The muntjac deer were barking at each other. The cows were going off in the fields over the back. I don't know what happened. We're off the moon phase. It's not great fishing conditions, you know, moon phase wise, but for whatever reason, Oxfordshire last night was going off and it was magical. And with so much activity, you're not carp alike, when they're jumping to that extent, you think, you always G yourself up and doing it so as a little boy. And every, every night you get nights like this or nights like last night, you're expecting loads of bites, aren't you? They were booming, all oh, the boom, boom. We were sitting there laughing. It was so extreme. And of course I thought I'm gonna catch 10 and I'm gonna get no sleep. And it was deadly quiet all night till about an hour before light or just as it was getting light really. And I caught the most incredible carp. I'm a lucky sod, I tell you. Um, one of the biggest, I think second biggest cod in the lake, an absolutely cracking old perch dorsal common. Can't wait to show you him, he's in the bag and uh, the sun's just coming up. So we're going to have our coffee and then we're going to get him out and show you him. Well, 
But there you are. Simple fishing, keeping it consistent, but more importantly, being persistent is the biggest part of carp fishing. When there's carp like this to catch, and this is a fantastic, beautiful old thing, and with a lovely perchy dorsal, loads of character and tons of history, this is what makes it worthwhile. You know, the wandering around, the messing around. When you get one of these, everything's right with the world. <laughs> Any a cracker, eh? He's a beauty, isn't he? Thank you very much.